Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Breaking Bitcoin Market Update. Hopefully, you're doing absolutely fantastic. We've got a good show for you guys today. Today is Monday, March 14th, 2022. We're going to be looking at the cryptocurrency market open, what I'm looking for in trade setups this weekend, going over technical analysis, answering your questions, and as always, trying to be a relatively decent show up in here. So, anyways... Hopefully you guys are doing fantastic wherever you happen to be watching us, wherever you happen to be tuning in from. Um, over the weekend, I wasn't too active. I'm still working on my new video. Uh, as you guys are aware, I talked about this before. Uh, I have had pretty good success with a good strategy in the, over the last um, several months of aping in to shit coins as soon as they list on the Ethereum blockchain or as soon as they list on Dex Screener. I'm going to be re listing or excuse me, um, publishing basically my tutorial on how I avoid rug pulls, on how I identify good coins, and basically the strategy on how to do that. It is a pretty fast-paced strategy. Uh, it does take some concentration, uh, and it does take paying some dues because uh, everyone gets rug pulled if you're trying to hop in. But I, I originally got this strategy from studying the success of Anton Creel. Anton Creel, for those of you who don't know, was a very uh, is still a, a pretty well-known trader. He founded the Institute of Portfolio Management, um, he, uh, he was a Goldman Sachs trader, and then he went on to, after that, uh, kind of his, uh, the reason he became uh, famous, I guess, is he did a BBC, BBC show called Million Dollar Trader, where he took traders off the streets uh, and trained them how to trade. And him, uh, his main strategy, his claim to fame, the reason that he got hired at Goldman Sachs so easily, not just because he was he was smart and, and passed, had, had the grades and had the had the degree, but the main reason was because he would flip IPOs, right? That was his thing. He, fl he flipped IPOs. He, he picked up IPOs as soon as they listed uh, and sold them later on that day. So uh, you have this uh, you have this same strategy uh, on the blockchain and it's really cool. All right. The only th there's there's more risk. There's more danger because not only can price completely go down, you can get rug pulled. That's the difference between trading something that's on a licensed broker as opposed to trading something that's on the Ethereum blockchain. So I've come up with some pretty cool strategies uh, and and used and found some really good tools to help me out with this. But overall, small part of my uh, small part of my strategy. And we're going to be looking overall here today at what the market's doing. So let's get into that. Uh, if you guys have any questions or chart requests, drop them in the chat and we'll get on to that. Let's go. OK, uh, so here we are in the big scene. I did want to start off as usual uh, with essentially our analysis here of Bitcoin. Uh, we did end up closing last week and let's just kind of get zoomed in here. Uh, here we go. Uh, we did end up closing last week with a pretty um, uh, with a pretty uneventful a doji candle. You can see here that we we traded back up to the 55 weekly exponential moving average. Not much of anything rejected from there and closed the week as a relatively bearish doji, still continuing this consolidation in between the 100 uh, weekly exponential moving average and the 55 weekly exponential moving average. Of course, we do have to keep in mind downside targets down here between 25 and 18,000. Uh, so, and we've talked about that kind of ad nauseum. Now, the reason for that is because the only time we've really consolidated uh, following a peak of a cycle high was back here in 2018. Uh, where you can see here that we consolidate between the 55 and the 100 weekly exponential moving average before another 50% price decline down here to the 200 weekly exponential moving average. That's where we actually ended up bottoming out, and that's the current trade hypothesis. So relatively simple if this, then that strategy. If we break, if we break support down in this area, uh, momentum shorts, if those of you aren't already in shorts, definitely is the trade to take. Just taking that breakdown short and looking for that movement down to the weekly, or excuse me, to the weekly 200 simple moving average, which historically has always been the bottom for Bitcoin. That's the value area. That is the back, the truck up. And will there be volatility? Will there be trades to take in those areas? Absolutely, yes. Uh, but you just, um, you got to be aware of the danger, right? Got to be aware of the danger. So, okay. Um, otherwise, uh, let's say Bitcoin does something that it's never done before. And let's say we do end up breaking resistance here uh, up at the 55 uh, weekly exponential moving average. If that's the case, then pretty simple. We just look for the breakout long. So this is overall just a pretty simple area. If you understand classical technical analysis, if you understand classical trading, if you understand waiting for a, for the particular setup that you need to, to be waiting for, then you'll be good. There's no clearly established trend here on the weekly chart, except for the previous dominant trend uh, of the downside, right? So downside is the previous dominant trend. And now we've entered into this two month long period of consolidation. Periods of consolidation are good, right? They can either be accumulation or they can be uh, distribution, right? In this case, we already had distribution in this area up here. So if we, uh, one way to interpret this moving moving forward is redistribution. So redistribution is Wyckoff method. 
Uh, there are four stages to the mar to, to the Wyckoff stage of market cycles. Essentially, you have accumulation, you have markup, you have distribution, and you have markdown. Uh, there's also reaccumulation and redistribution. So let's say, for example, uh, this is a good example right here. Uh, if we come down here to uh, to 2019, we can see a large area of accumulation actually with a spring, which is another aspect of Wyckoff. Uh, we have the breakout, the sign of strength. We have that breakout, and then we have the markup period. Uh, we have a pullback, and then we have reaccumulation and another phase of markup, and then distribution and markdown. So what's happening right now as the market continues to move sideways is either redistribution or or accumulation, not reaccumulation, uh, uh, accumulation in the first part. Now. It is interesting to see that typically once we reach a cycle high, we don't tend to revisit those cycle highs after reaching a new high. So that is one uh, that is one way to view this. So as you can see, uh, the cycle high that we reached in 2013, when we did reach that market high in 2017, uh, we never revisited that high of 1,153. We formed a new we formed a new market high. Excuse me, a new market low accumulated and then had our market phase before reaccumulation. And then the bigger markup phase, which was 2021 uh, into 2022. Uh, so if you if you kind of go by that hypothesis, and so far it hasn't been broken yet, then you would say that this this level is not going to be revisited. Uh, that we'd actually be looking to establish a new market low somewhere around that 24, 25 thousand dollar mark. So definitely looking at that 25 thousand on the move to the downside if we do end up breaking this local support. Um, but you got to understand guys, like we've seen situations like this, the March meltdown, and of course the big breakdown. So typically when we do break down after that accumulation, we do get that 50% correction. Um, well, you know, to be honest, we only have one, 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 uh, on this higher time frame, one, uh, one kind of historical period of that. So, um, overall, the big thing is just to keep, stay protected and understand which way the market's going to move. Because if we do end up breaking to the downside, like I said, we typically do get those 50% corrections that marks capitulation. Uh, and it's usually not until all the hodlers are really sour that we actually do end up seeing the market turn around uh, and put in some significant strides to the upside. Okay. So if you're sitting on the sidelines, if you're sitting in stable coins, um, then there's really not too much to do here. Let's switch over to the after. Um, if you're sitting in stable coins, then there's really just not too much to do here, um, except for just wait, right? Uh, as a trader, if you're looking for that big weekly trend, those big weekly movements, um, then you just got to be patient. You got to be patient and wait for the movement to come to you. Uh, and it's and the weekly chart is pretty simple, right? You've got clearly established uh, support and resistance. All right. If this, then that. If this, then that. All right. The only things you got to watch out for here in these areas um, are situations like this. So uh, let's go back and look at. Um, yeah, let's go back and look at this situation. Uh, and, and here's the thing. If we come down to the weekly 200 simple moving average, if we test it on a red candle uh, and then we close above it on a weekly candle, that has always been the sign to go. All right. So here we come down and test the weekly and then we close a weekly green above it. That's the sign to go. There is a little bit more of a pullback, but but, but that's the time to go, guys. So if you're looking at establishing those back to truck up positions uh, and same thing here, uh, when we come down and test that significant moving average, this isn't the 200. This is the 55, of course. Uh, but once we close that, once we test it, right, uh, that's the time to go. As you can see, there's a little bit more of a pullback here, but that's the time to go, guys. Um, so very same, very same hypothesis here. If we come down on this red candle, uh, you, you don't want to, I wouldn't set the limit orders here necessarily, uh, because you don't know if you're going to get a wick like this. You don't know what's going to happen. And this wick goes about 25% below uh, the 200 weekly moving average. So you don't want to get caught up, especially if you're using leverage, you're just going to get liquidated. Um, so spot positions are, so if you're trading spot, if you're looking for a spot accumulation, totally fine to be using those limit orders here. But if you're using leverage, if you're using Bybit, if you're using BitMEX or Darabit or, or KuCoin margin, whatever, uh, Binance margin, then you definitely want to wait for trend confirmation, which is once we come down, you want to wait for that first green candle to close above that 200 weekly simple moving average. And then you can go in and have your long term positions there. Now, of course, I would really be doing this on spot and then you can transfer that spot over and use margin to get up to your appropriate risk tolerance position size. Uh, OK, uh, but one thing, one thing that can be tricky here to look out for, of course, is uh, is is a fake break. Right. And we get something like that. Hmm. We get something like that kind of here. It's not a perfect example, but you see here where we're consolidating at the weekly 55 exponential moving average. And then we close a weekly candle below it and then we pop right back up. All right. You want to be careful about that. Um, and, and by careful, I just mean that you need to have your stop losses set. So let's just go back in time. Uh, let's use the let's use the replay function of trading view so we can actually go see and see what this would have been like trading this live. 
Um, so you enter into this weekly position, and if you're a premium member, you're going to be using Quadrigo uh, as your stop and target system. So you're going to have your first uh, target established here around 24,000, which is incidental with the 100 weekly moving average. Ex excellent, excellent, excellent. You got your stop loss up here at 42,969. Okay, you're looking for that big weekly swing. All right, so the next weekly candle occurs, and this should be closing green. Interesting. Oh, okay, hold on. There we go. Let's get that weekly close. There we go. There we go. Okay. To get that weekly close, as you can see, you're nowhere near your stop loss. So you stay nice and protected, but you did close back above the level that was your validation because you are looking for almost immediate movement to the downside. And if the trade doesn't go in your favor immediately, you need to close out at a loss. You'd be taking a loss uh, on that particular trade of about 12%. Nothing, I mean, nothing to, to not write home about. Definitely something that sucks. But uh, definitely something that you need to do uh, because what followed that? Well, let's just play the clock forward a little bit. Yeah, it, it got a lot worse, right? It got a lot worse. So you want to take a 12% loss or do you want to take a 40% loss is the question you have to ask yourself. If you choose to trade cryptocurrency, you need to understand these percentages, okay? So let's get out of replay mode. Let's get back over to the future. So going over that strategy one more time, let's get zoomed in here and talk about this, all right? So if we end up breaking down below this 100 weekly moving average, that is a weekly close below this line, okay? then you need to be established into a momentum short. If we close back up, you close the position out and you wait for some other form of confirmation to go long. In this case, since these moving averages are so close together, again, you would, you would, I would divert back or revert back to looking for that breakout trade, that weekly close above here, and then looking for that upside potential here. All right. Don't get trapped in a position that isn't the position that you want to be in. It's not what you want to do. All right. Otherwise you take that momentum short Price closes below and you hold that momentum short until you get some oversold signal or until we reach your profit target. All right. Uh, now, I would probably let's zoom back out here and let's get an idea here. If we're looking to use Quadrigo here, then we've got our first target here at 32409. Uh, and so I would definitely be taking 50 percent profit there uh, and then trailing my stop loss. And you can choose to do whatever you want. Uh, I just think that once you reach, once you get that nice price declination, that would be a price movement from here to there of about 16%. Lock in those profits, trail that stop loss, whether you want to take 50% like I do, or whether you want to take like 10, 10 or 15%, it doesn't matter. Uh, just protect your profits and let that trailing stop run you down uh, until you hit your profit target down here is what I would do. All right. Okay. So weekly, weekly chart here is pretty simple. Uh, nothing huge going on. Uh, just consolidation. And this is the calm before the storm. So this is not an area of the chart. This is not a time in the market where you want to get lackadaisical. This is not a time in the market when you want to be complacent. Um, you want to have your game plan absolutely ready because when Bitcoin moves, it's going to move, right? It's, it's going to move and it's going to take the market. Uh, it's going to take the market with it. So um, be aware of that. Don't just sit around and be complacent. This is the time to be testing your strategies. This is your time to be preparing for the next uh, leg of the bear market, or this is the time for you to be preparing or the beginning of a bull cycle, all right? This is, this is you need to be prepared for this, right? You can't just sit around uh, and expect to hold the same positions that you were holding here or here uh, or here, and the market's gonna be kind to you. No, you've gotta be dynamic. You've gotta change what you're doing if you wanna be a trader, uh, and you've gotta be prepared for which way the market moves. So if we break the weekly 55 to the upside, I'd be pretty excited. Let's trade to the long side. If we break the weekly 100, be pretty bearish. Let's trade to the bear side. That's simple, all right? But you gotta be prepared for that and not just have an idea of what you're going to do. You need to know exactly what you're going to do. What kind of stop loss are you going to use? Where are you going to take your profits? What indicators are you using? What are your metrics? What's your invalidation? When do you take a loss? You need to know all these things going in. So, uh, and you've got, you've got all the time. You've got all the time here. Now, obviously, uh, if we take a look at the traditional markets here, um, looking at the SPY FTX here, we can see that things aren't looking to actually I want to go look at the normal spy. I don't want to look at the FTX spy. Okay. Looking the same, but let's go look at the daily here on the spy. Uh, we can see here that the spy did slip yet again and kind of looking not too different, but not too the same either. So we do have this kind of more volatility, I would say, coming in from the spy. And this is the daily of the spy. Um, so as we can see here, uh, we are basically right back at support. Uh, this is going to be our second test of support, and it does really look like the SPY wants to break through here uh, and reach new lows uh, for the year. And if that's going to happen, guys, Bitcoin's going to go with it. Bitcoin's not going to go the other way. So definitely be watching that as well uh, and just be prepared because we can see that same thing happening out. Here's that support. 
This is going to be our second test of it, and we are pushing up right now, uh, but it doesn't look too good uh, in the future. All right, so we do have the Fed rate hike expectations coming up. Let's see if the market does respond positively to that. Uh, but overall, things are not looking too great for our favorite assets here. Okay. Um, all right, so overall bearish bias there on the weekly. Uh, on the daily here, uh, again, we do have relatively fresh short signals. Let's take a gander here. Okay, so we got fresh short signals. All right, we had fresh short signals here, led to a profitable trade. Uh, we didn't have a long trade here. Price immediately rejected. We got a fresh short signal. Let's look at our indicators that we're using for these trades, as you can see here. Let's get rid of this one, and we are going to be using... Actually, sorry, let's slide over here. Okay, so here on the daily, just using the PTP system that is kind of the default. A lot of people use this, all right? So we've got the Donchi in 26. We could also use the Hall 60. Hall 60 is fine, doesn't matter. See here, it's giving us the same signal here. So here's the Hall 60, right? We've got Parallax, we've got Time Transformation, and we've got Wada Atar Explosion. Even if we switch Time Transformation to Minx, Minx is being probably the one of our more popular indicators uh, that people are gonna be utilizing. Um, so let's get Minx on. We've got CC, Kraken Cryptocurrency, Minx. Okay, perfect. So even if we use Minx and we go back to the default settings here on Minx, okay, and we're going to pair Minx up with the 60 Hall as well, as we teach you guys in the tutorial. All right, so here we are. We got the 60 Hall, right? There's that initial short signal we talked about. Here's the short signal, right? Uh, taking the trade down to the downside. Let's go back. We're not getting much volatility, not a lot of movements, but we're making money, guys. And that's the point of using the PTP system. That's the way that we trade. Make money no matter what. We pull Quadrigo up. We're going to trade to the short side on this signal. We're trading to the short side on this signal. Where's our first target? 36, uh, 823, right here. All right, let's mark that out with a horse. Nah, that's not what I want to do. Sorry, guys. mark that out with a horizontal ray off of magnet mode horizontal ray there we go um and get rid of quadrigo and then let's play the tape forward Ooh, i don't i don't actually think we hit that take profit target that is a shame hold on a sec let's go back and see if i mess that up okay Thirty-six, three eighty-eight. Okay, three go off. Why is it thirty-six four twenty-four? Okay, that's all right. 36,388. I don't think we hit that actually, guys. I think I was wrong. Yeah, okay. We were just shy of there. Come down. Okay, so short trade there. Where are we back at? Hold on a second. Let's get it here. Okay. So fresh short trade here. All right. Kind of similar. Looking for that similar setup here. 36,148. I did it again, didn't I? Who taught this guy? That. Okay. Horizontal ray. 36,148,72. That's where we're at. Okay, cool. So that is essentially the target that we got right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and now we've had this nice pullback to the baseline. All right. So if... Um, I guess the only thing here, uh, the only thing that's going to make this different is if the SPY and crypto markets in general react positively to the rate hikes, um, which is possible. We can get a contrarian movement here. Um, and then essentially we're just looking again for that. We're, you know, we're, we're just kind of getting whipsawed here, which yeah, sucks, but... Um, 
you know, you kind of take your picks. Now, you'll notice here, you'll notice here that if we're using our volatility indicator, Wadatar explosion, we actually don't take this trade. As you can see, we don't have a rising explosion level. And we don't take this long trade, okay? Because we don't have the green bar above. And we don't actually take this trade either. So a real, so this is cool. Real PTP is telling us really not to trade this daily range at all. Uh, and it's keeping us out of this chop and consolidation. And I talked about this too. So we I can either adopt like a reversion to the mean strategy here um, if we want to trade or we just have to wait for that daily breakout. But one thing is pretty clear here. Uh, as I talked about, look, we're getting lower highs and higher lows, lower highs and higher lows. Uh, and that's indicative of volatility contracting and tightening up. All right, so let's get off bar replay mode. Um, volatility contracting and tightening up. Now, low volatility precedes high volatility. High volatility precedes low volatility. All right, back on the scene. B flow. I want to give a shout out to the chat, guys. What's going on, guys? Good to see you. Uh, we've got Ron Legato, B flow, Donver Elst. We've got GT Jack over on Twitch. Thanks for joining us. Chart request for Eagle Floyd. B flow wants to know about Rune USDT. Mystery through Robert Warner. Good to see you, man. Did see a yellow beef. Uh oh, beef low. <laughs> All right, I'm just teasing, guys. Um, good to see you, Brett. Uh, let's see here. All right, so let's just like zoom back through like 15 seconds. So, what I just said there. All right, so the last real trade that we had was here, catching the last leg of this and here catching this maneuver right here so we've got tp1s tp1s uh, and this is a really a good area of the market we're taking that 50 percent profit at tp1 is just so helpful guys um but here we go we can also see we can also see from watatar explosion overall trend of volatility and volume dying down and again like i kind of said at the beginning like uh you know let's just let's just rewind a second here okay and just talk about what i just said a moment ago which is you don't want to be complacent here right here let's see if you guys like this shot yeah you don't want to be this is not the time to be complacent right this is the time to be ready to be prepared for kind of the big move um, and to know, just to understand what metrics you're looking for, either to the upside or the downside. So don't be pausing with your technical analysis. Uh, you know, even if you're not getting a bunch of active trades, that's not the point. The point is to get good quality trades. All right. Um, and if you want more frequent trades, then you've got to take your, you've got to take your daily strategy, which is where we start everybody off. And you've got to start walking that down to lower time frames. All right. Pretty simple. All right. Um, Okay, so nothing here on the daily. Uh, as I said, we do have bearish parallax, so we should be overall biased to the downside. We do have short initiation from Minx, um, but we don't have volume confirmation from Watatar explosion. So um, nothing, nothing coming, nothing coming. All right, so Joe's saying to check out HVP or BBWP to validate. There's an ATRP I've been playing with lately too. And AM's uh, kind of co-signing saying BBWP by Caretaker is phenomenal. Definitely check it out. Let's see what we got. Okay, so we've got a nice volatility indicator. Um, and I'm going to assume that this works just like, um, okay, yeah, so this works just like Watatar Explosion. In fact, it's giving the, pretty much the exact same signals. This seems a little faster. Let me turn, okay, false positive filter I do have turned off. Let's see what their Bollinger Band settings are. A 13 length and a 252 look back, interesting. Okay, so uh, 13 length uh, and a 252 look back. Okay, would give us, yep, seems like the exact same signals, right guys? So 
we look at these side by side. Let's get Parallax off here. Let's get Minx off here. Okay, and let's get these these guys side by side. So that is what the explosion level of Wada Tar Explosion does. It is literally um, BBWP. Uh, it is uh, it, it's as the Bollinger Band uh, arms. It's as the upper and lower Bollinger Band uh, expand or get farther away from each other. Uh, then the line, the explosion level is going to begin rising. And I've also programmed it to turn yellow to alert me. And as the bands contract, meaning volatility is contracting, then the then it's going to start declining and it's going to be grayed out. It's not going to color anymore. So um, let's just go look here. Um, so we have, and I'm assuming this is the exact same thing. So we have the signal line and we have the BBW line. So as we can see here, we've got this crossover. Seems like mine's a little faster on this one. Oh, not a horizontal line. Oh, why is it working now and not opening a blast pass? That's interesting. Uh, so we've got that crossover there and we've got the cross under here. We've got the cross over here and we've got the cross under here. So, okay, yeah, except for like one or two. And I think that's because my length is, let's go see what's my length. My length must be hard coded. Uh, let's see here. Okay, I, so he's added this, yeah, so he's added this look back function, um, which is interesting. Maybe something, to, maybe something to consider for my own code. Yeah, so we've got uh, cross under from here, so we've got blackness from here. Okay, so we've got volatility. I, I guess he's saying hitting an extreme. I'm assuming this is price deviating outside. I'm yeah, I'm assuming these red and blue bars are when price deviates outside of the Bollinger Bands. Yeah. Or either when they deviate and come back inside. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. So let's look at, uh, yeah, so let's look at, uh, I guess, when we saw a previous extreme in low volatility right here. This is when we saw the spring, uh, and this was back in July of 2021. We saw that spring, so we already have 50% price decline. We saw that spring, and then price marked up about 60%. Make sure I'm right on that. 130%, okay twice as much as what I said. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking I was thinking I was thinking from the breakout. So, that's still 84%, so I'm still off a little bit. It's still off about 14% there, but All right. Um No, this is cool. I like this. So, yeah, that's exactly what this and this is actually in the in the Wada Atar explosion uh, tutorials that I have uh, for all the premium members, I actually go over how you can just use, if you want, um, you can uh, ignore the deltas and you can just use this, right? So maybe I can look at the source code on this and maybe update my volatility filter here uh, for water tar explosion. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. All right, cool, guys. Uh, let's... Um, let's go over and look at the three hour. Three hours relatively telling here. Here we can see just, again, we've got, a we've got this range, three hour range. 
We've got a deviation from the range uh, where we did get uh, the super duper Dima strategy taking advantage here. Uh, did we get 3%? The automated strategy is taking profit at 3%. Nah, we just barely missed it from the open. If you got a slightly better price, maybe you entered somewhere in on this breakout knowing the price is going to happen. But uh, this this three hour bar happened relatively quick. We didn't actually get a 3% price movement, just shy of it. And then price pulls back uh, and puts us back into uh, bearish territory. So we've been in a three hour super duper Duma short on Bitcoin since here. And just at break even. We've had some deviations from the range. Excuse me for that. Uh, some deviations from the range. We have had a 4% movement. So if you're using the 3% take profit target, which is kind of the default, uh, then you did take profit. You bank profit right there. Um, so, I mean, this is pretty telling to me, guys. Here, uh, you know, you look to short, especially if you look at the 45 minute time frame. Uh, 45 minute time frame. Again, you've got that rejection. And here we've got lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. Um, and you can come up here and wait for a lower high. Uh, but overall, just as I just as I was thinking this, like when before I started getting ready for the stream, we were right here. And, and my my thought for the day was 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 definitely short as I move into the, the afternoon here, the evening. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and you need uh, you've got pretty good invalidation. Here's the three hour time frame. So if price does end up breaking above that 200 uh, double exponential moving average, well, there you go. Uh, but essentially, you're looking for tightening volatility and you're looking for the breakdown of this range. Uh, and that conforms to our plan on the weekly. And that also conforms to that setup that we were looking for on the daily. So we go to this, we toss our EMAs back on, we get zoomed in here. Uh, yeah, so that's just exactly what we were looking for on the weekly, looking for the breakdown here. And on the daily, looking for that breakdown as well. So trading in the direction of the higher time frame trends. Uh, and if we do end up getting deviation, three hour time frame, if we do end up coming up here, and tagging 39.823, closing higher than that, that's going to be putting us in a bullish trend uh, on the three-hour time frame, on the meso time frames. It's going to be kind of a daily close above this. And the thing to watch for here would be interesting is we've gotten smacked down from this rejection area three times. So we'd be looking for a fourth test of resistance at 45,000. Um, and if we do break above that, that three-hour super trend, I would be looking for a retest of that. I don't think we're going to get there. Um, in fact, the worst thing would be is if we form a higher low. Um, a lower high, excuse me, somewhere around 41,000. It'd be right up around here. But, uh, I mean, you go for it. I mean, you got to go for it, right? You have to go for it. So, oh, thanks, guys. I appreciate that. All right. Um, Okay, so pretty boring day in the markets overall. Um, let's look at crypto bubbles. Uh, big losers of the day. Uh, sorry, let's switch up to a um, picture. Okay, big losers of the day. Hex uh, down 15.3%. We've got Rune up 15%. Phantom, my baby. <laughs> Phantom down 11.3% as well. Uh, so, you know, just getting hit. Rune up 15%. Uh, Anchor Protocol down 7.5%. Chili's down 6.4%. Avalanche down 4.4%. Uh, we got Shiba Inu down 3 Nothing. I mean, nothing really to talk about. The big movers of the day are Phantom, Hex, Rune, Chili, Zcash, Celo, and Anchor Protocol. Um, so let's go take a look at those charts and see, see what we think. So we're going to start off with Rune. Uh, and let's get over here to... Uh, here we go. All right, so we Rune is tradable on Bybit, so we can look for a leveraged position on Rune USDT. Um, and what do we got? Let's actually, you know what? I want to, you know what? No, I don't. I don't need more historical data. I don't. I don't because it doesn't matter. Um, Rune's relatively interesting here. Let's actually throw on. Yeah, let's throw on. Um, get rid of this. We've got Parallax. Uh, we need to reset Minx to our default settings here, and we'll have a proper uh, PTP system. We've got the hull 60, um, and all's good. Um, so as we can see here, pretty cool. Bottom feeder actually grabbed uh, a trade on this recently. Our bottom feeder algorithm did pick us up on this candle, uh, which put us in for this nice pump candle, which is a 40% candle, a pullback back down to the baseline, 
Uh, and then we had a pullback entry, right? So we had this nice crossover. Uh, we could see here Minx calling for a short. Actually, sorry, that's not right. So let's get let's get Minx synced up with the Hall 60 so we're not getting false signals here. Okay, and we see that short signal goes away. Okay, so now we've got our, our indicators properly linked up. Um, we get this nice pullback and this uh, this Minx cross right here. So we can get, we could have gotten it on this trade right here. Uh, and we'd been up, let's see here, about 36.21%. So pretty cool, 36.21% on the daily. Uh, we are getting relatively close to our overbought threshold. So I'd be careful. This is definitely where if you're in Rune, you want to set that trailing stop. Uh, if we pull up in Quadrigo right here, right now, and we switch to the long side, let's switch to the long side on Quadrigo. Um, let's get zoomed in here. Um, we got, we want to be, we want to be managing our loss at, uh, at 612. All right. 612 is where we need to be setting that trailing stop loss essentially right below today's daily open. Um, or, you know, maybe a little bit, maybe like right here, honestly, is so below this low of the previous daily candle, but you know, setting it at the, at the current daily open is good as well. That's totally fine. Um, and that way, if this thing does continue to run up into our, our ATR targets up above, okay, fine. Um, but if, if it pulls back then you're only going to lose out that 15%. You're still getting this gain right here. All right. Okay. Um, Rob, Robert, what's wrong, man? Why are we crying? Nothing to cry about. You can see Wada Tar Explosion has also been agreeing here. So yeah, so we've got, um, see Parallax doesn't agree. Uh, we've got entry on uh, here. So either way, good trade. Um, and I'm just not seeing, you know, listen, you definitely want to be taking profits as the market's moving up. So this is definitely, we're up what? So if you entered here, then we're up like 35%. Boom, take those profits, good. Um, but you don't want to chase this. And this hasn't gone full parabolic yet. So I'm not mad at you if you look for this entry here. Everything's still good. Um, you know, you, you had your best entry here like three or four days ago. Um, and the market's not super strong right now. Um, so I'm not really recommending an entry into Rune USDT. Yes, we can continue to run here. Uh, but, I, you know, I would be cautious here. You know, you, I don't like to chase things. Now, it is true that when things trend, they can trend real strong, obviously, in cryptocurrency. Um, but I prefer to have that opinion when the market's very strong. And the market's not very strong right now. So keep that in mind. Uh, I wouldn't be chasing this one. And if you do go in, maybe go half risk, tight invalidation. Ideally, you do want to wait for a pullback here. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, those, those pullbacks sometimes don't come. So uh overall if you're in rune uh lock in some profits start trailing that stop loss don't chase and if you do if you must if you have to if you have to be in a trade right now then uh then just look uh you know then then just use half risk you know use half risk uh you know just for the the purposes of of talking about it let's uh okay uh, if we are entering here um, then we're looking at a stop loss around six dollars and ten cents, and we're looking at eight fourteen, eight ninety six, and nine seventy seven for our profit targets moving forward. Okay. All right. So uh, next, we're going to be looking at Phantom. All right, Phantom also tradable on Bybit, so we can get this bad boy on Bybit. And unfortunately, Phantom has just been in this downtrend, right? So V three three was a flop. Andre Crony rug pulled. Uh, Oh, sorry, I'm so I'm sorry to hear about that. Uh, uh, B flow. Um, but hopefully we can make some money with Phantom. Um, uh, Gui asks if that is a window to my right. Yes, yes, that is a window to my right. Uh, sometimes the music shines through it, or excuse me, the light shines through it, and in a very uh, very nice fashion. And that's kind of my signal to. Take profit, you know what I mean? Okay. Um, but in all seriousness, uh, <laughs> tell this man got a stream deck. 
All right, so look at, let's actually go over here. So looking at Phantom. Um, Hex has you crying, but I'm just joking. Oh, okay, I got you, I got you. Uh, Pulse Channel, Pulse Chain's gonna do well, man. It's all good. Um, yeah, thank you, man. I actually, I, I really like the, um, I actually do like the lighting in here. It's difficult. It's difficult when you're setting up a stream uh, to get the lighting correct, and it's not perfect by any means. Uh, but but I'm I'm pretty happy with it. Like especially uh, for the DSLR shot. Uh, sometimes the issue is that light can be so overpowering that it takes over your accent lights, um, and that's not really the case here. My accent lights show up real nice, um, and the blue hue uh, tends to make my face pop out because blue is the opposite color of skin tone. So a uh, little um, and yeah, just for there's the there there's the there's the window for you. You can see it right there. Okay, uh, back into what we were doing. All right, um, or no, we were on half chart, weren't we? Okay, uh, so Phantom USDT, we do actually, we had a bottom feeder signal. Bottom feeder's been doing really good on Phantom. We could see it told us to accumulate in this area, and then we had this nice run-up kind of leading to V33. Um, but V33 is a flop, like I said. Uh, Andre Crony rug pulled and, you know, the solid exchange was a flop and, 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 blah. so everybody's dumping their phantom. Um, I was lucky enough to pull out of phantom pretty much at the right moment. Um, so all well and good. So, um, just, you know, just, just tanking. looks like we're just going to hit this stop loss on uh, this most recent bottom feeder signal here on phantom. Uh, so they're not all winners, but not too bad. Uh, let's, let's look here. Overall, we've been in a hell of a downtrend had shorts from here, had shorts from here, uh, and now we've got active shorts on Phantom right here. So as you can see, uh, we cross underneath here. Uh, well, I'm not sure why we're not getting the short signal, but. Uh, yeah, should be getting, that should be a short signal right there because we cross, oh, I see, because we actually cross underneath here. Um, and we've got that filtering. So um, anyways, we could have taken the trade here, uh, a three bar rule, um, and we'd be up about 20, 24% on the phantom short. So uh, we had the water tar explosion come in on that very same bar, confirming the downside trade right here. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's about it. Phantom looks like AIDS guys. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's going down, it's going down. Yeah, well, ever you know, so we're gonna be, yeah, uh, we'll we'll do that, Gui, because, uh, uh, you know, I had um, you know, I had a heck of a garden, uh, before moving here to Colorado, and now here in Colorado, we haven't really gotten the opportunity to replant, but this year, once the weather gets nice, we're going in, boys. You know, we're not gonna do the early spring stuff. We're just not ready. We don't have the garden uh, area set up. Uh, but we're going to be doing a lot, a lot out there. Uh, this, this is the year this house takes, takes a big turn and, and we'll definitely, we'll definitely be showing it off. So, okay. Um, so phantom looks like AIDS. Uh, I wouldn't chase into the short. Um, we're a little past the entry. I mean, we're already at 26, but if we do bounce, um, then you can look for that, look for that re-entry. Uh, finally, we've got uh, Hex, and we'll take a look at Anchor Protocol, because uh, I do have money on Anchor Protocol. So let's go take a look at Hex. And look at Hex USDC. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to get this off here and the qualifier. Excuse me. Okay. Um, same thing, bottom feeder did really good, you know, accumulated hex right here. Um, then we had that nice pop off hitting the take profit targets. Uh, and, and bottom feeder is doing something similar here, but I don't have, a, I, I, I feel that these, these aren't going to work. Um, yeah, so we're close. We got the take, we got the stop loss down here at about nine cents, 9.99 cents. Um, and I just think that that's, that's going to get hit. I mean, hex just, just looks, just looks really bad here. Um, you know, lower high lower high uh and uh, this is this is kind of the way of the shitcoin, right you know like drift down drift down drift down drift down scam pump drift down drift down drift down scam pump drift down drift down scam pump that's that's just how they tend to work 
Um, so, yeah, let's um, let's talk about hacks like this because it's scary. Um, so, yeah, guys. Um, got the short signal right here. Um, the, the momentum isn't quite there from Wadatar, but we're already negative on Parallax and have been for quite a while. So if we get, uh, Wadatar popping back up, then we could look to take Hex significantly shorter. I'm not actually sure where we can short Hex. Maybe Poloniex. No. No, they don't have a perpetual contract, so. Um, You know, as with a lot of things, I bet that if, if Hex was easier to short, the price would not have done as super well as it probably has done. So anyways, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's all I got. That's all I got for Hex. Uh, all right, it's 3.30, so we've gone for about an hour. Um, So let's go ahead and just do a scan of the rest of the markets and see what we've got going on. Um, Ave looking again, just just tightening volatility here, guys. No active signal. We can see really nothing coming in here uh, from uh, Watatar explosion. No active signals, but I'd be biased with Ave here to the short side, uh, unless again we do have support here. We've tested it. We we could see a bounce. Uh, I'd be a little bit excited if we get over one thirty two twenty five. That would be kind of nice to see. Uh, and then we could actually kind of look for a breakout trade. Uh, but that's going to be happening. If that happens, that's going to be happening in the context of a wider market breakout. Um, so until then, again, just like all other things, kind of looking for that breakdown in Ave. Cardano, same thing. Look almost like the identical chart. Looking for that breakdown. Algo already breaking down. Uh, Alice already breaking down. Cosmos already beginning to break down here. Avalanche already broke down, getting close to take profit targets. Axie Infinity looks just like that Ave and uh, Cardano chart, looking like it's going to break down here. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, a little bit more volatile, looking like the Bitcoin chart here, but again, looking like it wants to break this level of support. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, not, not Bitcoin, but BIT. Uh, again, looking like AIDS here, guys, just in a downtrend at that level of support, looking like it wants to break further. BNB just looks like Bitcoin here. Uh, we've got lower highs and, and higher lows, so tightening volatility, looking for that movement to the downside. Bitcoin, we already talked about. Seller USDT, already in the process of breaking down. Chili's uh, looking a little stronger, but again, looking like it wants to come down here and test this support. Around 15 cents, compound, already breaking down. Curve, already breaking down. Dogecoin, already been breaking down. Dot, uh, already been breaking down. Uh, let's Sushi, let's just jump around. Breaking down. Solana, breaking down. Shiba Inu, breaking down. Sand, breaking down. Amisago, breaking down. Matic, breaking down. Mana, breaking down. Luna, the only thing that's been different, right? Um, and that's because Luna just got a recent injection of about a billion dollars. So uh, Luna's actually looking not too bad. We had this nice pullback. And as long as we can stay up here, uh, above 83640 uh, we could actually look for this continuation long trade on luna so i might be adding this to my portfolio tonight and recommending this trades for the members as well so uh luna one to keep on the watch list a bright sea of ha excuse me a bright gem of happiness uh in between a sea of ugliness all right guys um okay so uh let's just switch over and uh if you guys have <laughs> i thought you gave up coke a long time ago you know we try guys we try um uh, you know nobody's perfect so uh, I'll let you guys, uh, uh, we'll turn on, uh, we'll turn on the beats here and you guys just let me know if you have any questions. So we'll take a, we'll take a few minutes to answer questions or look at chart requests, uh, before we, um, before we end the stream.
I do want to mention that uh, uh, the Econ Committee of the European Union Parliament did just vote against the um, proof of work ban. 32 against, 24 in favor. This is uh, pretty big. This is pretty good for the uh, Bitcoin and crypto community in the European Union. Um, so they were looking for kind of for a de facto breakdown uh, a ban of um, cryptocurrency mining, of proof of work mining. Bacon futures are bullish. All right, GT Jack, uh, GT Jack requesting Eagle Bacon futures are bullish. Yes, they are. Okay. Um, let's uh, okay. Let's let's go look at uh, Eagle. EGLD on Binance. Uh, again, uh, again, this kind of looks like every other chart. Two possibilities, guys. We've got tightening volatility. Uh, as we could see here, the market broke up. Uh, it had this nice little rally scam wick to the upside. Pretty much pull back ever since then. And we've come back down to this level of support. Tested it right here. Let's actually get zoomed in here. Uh, so let's draw. So tested it right here. Wow, that was a lot. That was a big one. Uh, tested it right here. Uh, and we can see it tested it right here, lower, uh, lower high, lower high. Uh, and it looks like we want to come back down and test again, is what we want to do right here. Um, so again, it, I, we need to watch it's possible. It's possible looking at the broader market that we, that, that this have breakdown doesn't happen, that we bounce off this level of support, but whenever a trade looks so obvious, uh, you know, like, like this always happens to me, I'll be like, oh, we're at support, we're at support, we're at support. We're going to bounce. I mean, we always end up breaking through and the mistakes that I've made in the past as a trader is not just understanding that, 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 that once support breaks, you should be looking for the short, not every time, not on the macro scales. You'll see on the lower time frames like price will bounce, reach support, come up, you go for the long somewhere here, right? And then it'll come down, hit your stop loss and then move right back up. That's not what happens on the daily time frame. Okay. That happens on the five minute time frame. Okay. Uh, that's not what happens on the daily time frame. And that was one of the biggest mistakes that I made um, moving from lower time frame Forex trading. Wow, this chart looks like a goddamn mess. Uh, moving from higher time frame or lower time frame Forex trading to higher time frame swing trading in cryptocurrency is, 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 you know, I'd always see things like this and be like, okay, well, if price breaks here, I can expect it to go up because that was a stop loss hunt. That is not, that is not, uh, that is not what, it's just not, it's just, it's not what's going to happen. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, so I think this, this looks bad, man. I think this looks bad. We've, we're below the hall 60. Um, you can see this lowering volatility here. We're negative on parallax. We're getting active short signals, uh, from minx here. Um, and so unless we get a broader market rally, um, off all the levels of support, like does this chart look any different from this chart? It looks the exact same or this chart. It looks the exact same. Um, so Unless we get a broader market rally, um, I would be I would be trading this to the short side on 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 the price breakdown. So again, that's around one thirteen oh seven, which is a bit of a ways. Yeah, it's about twenty percent below current price. Uh, let's see here. Bflow says that the the thing that I just mentioned with regards to the European Union uh, proof of work, I don't think that really has anything to do with Ethereum wanting to switch to proof of stake. Murdoch the Murloc, good to see you, my friend. Hi, Justin. Nice to catch you live. Would like to know what will be the streaming video schedule. Also, can you take a look at Mir if possible? Yeah, Mirror Protocol. Yeah, so listen, I know, you know, this is, a, this is a big thing. I've had everybody kind of reach out to me. I know I've been all over the place with the streaming schedule. Um, you know, and just, there's not really a good excuse for it, guys. I apologize. We used to be here at 11 o'clock every day uh, for years, and now it's just kind of been, you know, whenever I feel like it, which is not a good, it's not a good thing. You know, you guys have been with us for a long time, and I want you guys to be able to uh, kind of, you know, be able to plan for when the stream is going to happen. Um, 
so I would like to do, I'd like to say, I'd like to do the stream at, at still around the same time, um, around 11 a.m. my time. So still like noon to two on the Eastern seaboard, or excuse me, uh, 1 p.m. Uh, uh, Eastern time. Um, you know, and I do remember that back in the day when we did switch to an evening stream, we didn't have the best success. Like the Aussies liked it because they were able to actually catch us. Uh, it's just, it's just kind of an awkward time to do streams, right? You know, especially having a kid. Uh, you know, usually the best time to do streams is at night. Uh, that's when people are relaxed. Um, uh, or, you know, like able to watch a full-time stream. But um, I don't know. And I know we have a lot of people watch the stream back, but I don't have a solid answer for you guys right now. It's possible that we'll be moving it to something like three, maybe. So that would be three, so like 1 p.m. my time. So yeah, so something maybe like 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, but I just don't have that solid answer for you yet. What I will tell you is that I am going to, I am going to do my absolute best, uh, to be as consistent and daily with the stream as possible. And I'm going to be trying to upload, uh, at least twice a week, uh, original content to YouTube here. So, um, finally got the studio, like reset up the way that I want it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I know that sounds really wishy-washy, but you know, I'm just doing my best over here, guys. Um, and we'll take a look at mirror protocol. Do I think that uh, the miners are okay with switching to proof of stake and having their income? Um, no, I don't think that they are. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't think that they're going to be able, it, it's gonna be interesting. So on one hand, I don't think that they're gonna be able to hold up um, all the developers that wanna push uh, for the fork. Um, the reality is, is that, um, most users of Ethereum uh, are, I would say most, most users of Ethereum are in favor of proof of stake so that these massive gas fees can go down. Um, I would say that overall, the community is in favor of proof of stake. Now, obviously the miners have a lot of sway, but uh, the best that they could do is fork the chain, right? And then you can just have miner controlled Ethereum, right? You can have miner controlled Ethereum, you can have Ethereum proof of stake, and we'll see which one the market, market decides. Very similar to, um, uh, uh, when we had, um, the Ethereum, Ethereum classic split after the Dow hack, the market decided the market went with what the overwhelming amount of developers and users wanted. And I think the market will choose that way again. Ethereum classic, still a multi-million dollar chain. So, um, mirror protocol. Uh, mirror protocol actually looking relatively interesting here. So I would actually be negative here, uh, even though we had some accumulation and mirror protocol moving a little bit differently from the rest of the market. So we got a couple things here. Uh, we've got this level of accumulation, a couple pop-ups, and then finally a break pullback and then another possible break, but, but just not, not any like strong established daily trends, still very choppy. And in the overall context of a weak, mo uh, weak market, uh, with everything else posturing to the bear sides. So here we are back at support. So you do have a possible pullback entry here. You can take this pullback long. Uh, one thing to consider is that look at all these wicks here. So we do have now uh, very strong resistance here uh, in this area right here. So very strong resistance right here. So you can look to take the trade back up here for a retest of this resistance or possibly a slightly lower high. Get that swing failure pattern. We already had that swing failure pattern here. So now if we end up breaking below this baseline right here, Breaking below this previous level of support. Let's draw this. Looks like AIDS. Hold on a second here. So now if we end up breaking below this low, which is going to coincide with crossing below the baseline, you take the short, right? That's a swing failure pattern where the market makes a high, pulls back, fails to make a, a higher high, makes a lower high. And then once we break that low, you take the short, all right? That's what you go for. And typically you're going to set your stop loss at the high of the candle that breaks it. So like, let's say this candle falls down on the next candle. And we've got a little wick here. You would set your stop loss right here. And then you take the trade down. Um, so yeah, that's what I would be looking for there with Mirror Protocol. Um, alternatively, if you want to take that reversal baseline bounce uh, long trade right here, you've got one candle to take the long trade. I would set my stop loss. I would set my stop loss right here. And I take the long trade. And I would look for a target like right here. That's what I do.
Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you, Murdoch. Murdoch, I really appreciate that, man. Uh, Low Stray says the Rune MACD is turning positive on the weekly. Do I think there's more room for upside potential? You know, we just talked about Rune, and here's the thing. I I really the answer is yes. I think we can have more upside here in Rune. All right, here's the thing. We don't we don't see a, a massive blow off top. We haven't gone parabolic yet. There does seem to be traction here. There does obviously we, we're establishing a bullish trend here. Um, with you know, th with no sh we've seen no strength from the bears whatsoever. Now, ideally, a pullback's the best entry to look for here. So maybe if we see another red candle, we can look for another push leg to the upside. Um, but we're we're overall in a weak market, right? So it just makes me less inclined to look at trends like this and, and, and want to run them. You know, so I said earlier, my, my official recommendation was not necessarily to chase this, but if you do end up chasing this, you need to take for, you need to look for a long trade here. Um, then just go for half risk, guys. Just go for half risk um, or wait for that pullback. Wait for an actual pullback. Wait for something like a 10% pullback right here coming right right around here. And then you can try and take that long again. Like once you get um, something like, like a Minx crossover, right? So we can see how well uh, here was this crossover. Here's the last crossover to the upside. And this was... This candle right here, excuse me, this candle right here gave you a nice cross up right here. So, um, you know, yes, we can run. We can continue to run here on Rune, um, but we're already up 75%. Uh, and that's obviously nothing. Um, and Rune, the thing, uh, the thing that concerns me is this the overall weakness of the overall market, right? So everything else is looking like it's going to break down. Um, and once that breaks down, then I don't see Rune diverging from that. So, all right, cool. Well, if you followed all the way to the end, guys, thank you very much. I appreciate your views, I appreciate the support of the stream. A uh, brief moment here so I can pay the bills, guys. If you enjoy trading alongside with us, if you enjoy doing what we're doing, uh, you can trade right along with us at Bybit. Bybit.crackingcryptocurrency.com is going to bring you to a page that looks like this. Boom. Uh, you can get up to $300. I think it's like actually like $600. I can never remember. Anyways, uh, but uh, you can use that margin to trade. Uh, and I like that because essentially... Uh, you know, I signed up for Bybit uh, using my friend's link as well and got the free money. And the nice thing is that you can use that to learn how to trade. So you don't have to you don't have to start off uh, trading a lot. When I you know I did so much trading on Testnet, I did so much trading with a small capital account before I actually started putting my money into the market. Um, and it's extremely important. It's extremely important uh, to do that. So, anyways, if you guys want to support the channel, if you enjoy the content, if you want to keep us going. Sign up for a Bybit account, bybit.crackingcryptocurrency.com. If you'd like to learn to trade like we do, you can sign up for us at crackingcryptocurrency.com. All the links are in the description down below, as well as links to three commas, other tools that we use as well. Uh, but essentially, here at crackingcryptocurrency.com, you'll get access to all of our trade alerts. You'll get access to our online trading academy, as well as our premium indicator suite, all the indicators you see me use on the channel, as well as access to mentoring, sometimes one-on-one, -on -one, always group and community, and basically all the insights that you could possibly imagine from people and absolute degens who just wander the markets all day long and look for trade opportunities. So uh, anyways, if you want to help us out or if you want to help yourself out, you guys can definitely do that. So thank you guys for following this far in the video. Wouldn't be possible without you guys. If you guys want to support the show, uh, you wait for me to switch the camera over to the big screen. If you guys want to support the show, make sure to subscribe to us over here on YouTube. Uh, and give the video a thumbs up if you would. It does help us out in the algorithm. Leave a comment below if you have any questions, comments, concerns, sarcastic remarks, death threats, or hot stock tips are always appreciated. And we will be back tomorrow, probably at the same time. I will be modifying the banner in the bottom once I know exactly what time we're going to be going live. All the time. Yes, yes. Anyways. Uh, thank you guys for your support, and I will see you guys on the next one. Again, make sure to join us in the Discord if you haven't. Best time to always start. We've got some great guys in there, and the knowledge just continues to grow and grow. So, all right, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for all your support. Cheers. You know, I had the stream deck, but I didn't put the ending scene on my stream deck. Good to know. Got to do that.